Good morning. It's nine o'clock. Thursday, January twenty seventh. Dennis and Deanna, good to see you on here this morning. Is it snowing out your way? It is snowing here. Not quite as cold as it was yesterday, but uh, we definitely need the, the moisture. So I guess we'll have to live with the snow, right? Miss Betty, glad you're on here today too. And Joel, good to see you. <clears throat> so here we are. <laughs> uh, Betty, good morning. Hey, you too. Soon, as soon as I get on here, they're just like a couple of kids throwing a big fit and wanting outside. And uh, no, they're not going to get outside. Not by me, anyway. So, all right. So, I don't know if you noticed my shirt. It's, uh, it says, yeah, I've got OCD. Old, cranky, and dangerous. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's going on with them today. As soon as I sit down, they want outside. Throw them outside. They're probably going to go bark at the neighbors. That's what they're going to do. So, what? sorry. What? It's the chaos of the Monday. <laughs> they just spilled their water all over the floor. <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry. Oh, so I was going to, I had decided that I was going to try to make this a no news week, right? And um, other than Monday, I was going to skip the news, but I can't skip it. There is so much going on. Good lands, the loons are out. So, um, first of all, they uh, started dismissing service members yesterday who uh, wouldn't take the uh, the required uh, uh, HOTS, and um, so they they uh, <clears throat> have started booting them. They are giving them honorable discharge, but they booted out 45 of these people, uh, service members. So they have started the wave and, um, and then, I mean, it, it just gets better. So here he is, he's, you know, BDB's out there eating ice cream and, and, uh, the Ukraine is getting ready to get blown into oblivion. And, uh, now they're the left-wing liberals have decided that, Stephen Breyer needs to retire. And so uh, they actually started a, uh, a movement here. Oh, as soon as BDB got into office, retire Breyer. And uh, they, they want him out of there because he's old. They're afraid he's gonna keel over and die when uh, uh, the liberals aren't in control. So they're, they're pushing Breyer out. And so it sounds like he is going to uh, retire so that uh, brain dead can put in another uh, Supreme Court justice. And you know, the uh, uh, one name that's been thrown out there is uh, Kamala. <laughs> can you imagine that? No, I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, dumb in a post. And here she is going to be put in the position as a Supreme Court justice. Ah, uh, help us all, would you? Just help us all. So, <laughs> and then old Buttigieg or whatever his name is, you know, he's the transportation secretary. He's wanting to get more of those uh, traffic cameras out there. He's wanting to expand the bicycle lanes and uh, bus lanes and uh, because more people need to ride that filthy bus and more people need to ride their bicycles to work. And, um, and he also thinks that it would be a great idea to start taxing people for the miles that they drive. And 
these these people, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know what happened with with representatives who who actually come out of the the state and 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 come out of a, the same kind of lifestyle we come out of. Th these people have no idea how normal America works. They they have zero idea how normal America works. I, I mean they that you know that they said Hillary hasn't driven her own hasn't driven a car in I, I don't know 40 years. I, she's always had somebody taxing her around and make that chimp run around on a bicycle. You know, she needs to and and uh, I don't know. It's just crazy, isn't it? Crazy to me to think that uh, here, here they are just sitting up there and they are, they are uh, having their, their, you know, the, the, their limos parked outside, driving them, taking them around wherever it is that they want to go. And, and they, they just look at themselves. They, they look at themselves at something special. And when people start thinking that they're special, they're, they're, headed to a losing situation. And the, the arrogance of these characters is just amazing to me. And um, I, I mean, it goes on the news. I, 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 one positive aspect is said in 2021, there were 5.4 million first time gun buyers. <laughs> oh, I, you, you know what? Do you know what scares China? Do you know what scares Russia? It, it, it is not, it, it is not BDB and his cohorts. They, they're not afraid of those people at all. And they're not even afraid of this, you know, transgender uh, military that, that we're trying to push uh, that they're afraid of. Either. They're not afraid of that either. What they're afraid of is the, is the hundred and some million gun owners in this country that aren't going to stand for their nonsense. And, that's the only thing keeping these wild-eyed lunatics in 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 uh, D.C. from taking over too, and uh, so <laughs> Joel, you're not helping things. <laughs> oh man! So that was that was. Uh, and then I also read for those of you who are teachers out there, and one of the unions for the the teachers is. Uh, the American Federations of American Federation of Teachers, and they have they have partnered with a thing called NewsGuard. Well, that already ought to scare you when when you are partnering with a company called NewsGuard, and so they offer their browser, so it's an internet browser, and so you can you can give this to your schools, you can. You can actually sign up for this as parents at home and use that as your browser, your internet browser, and it will censor the news that you receive. And if they deem it misinformation, they will censor it for you. And guess what gets censored? It's not the liberal wild-eyed CNN stuff. It's anything that's conservative. And so that that's part of the teachers union that has made a deal with a place called NewsGuard. Now, I don't know, I have no idea if the American Federation of Teachers exists here in Colorado. I don't know if it's in Brush or Morgan Wiggins or you know our school districts around here, I have no idea. I don't know if that's just in the more wild-eyed liberal um, parts of the state or what, I, I don't know, okay? But uh, if it is here, then parents, you ought to be paying attention and, uh, uh, guard against some of this trash that's, I mean, it's just, it's just constant. So, but anyway, that's some of the news that's going on today. And uh, it, it's just, you know, that some days it, it seems to me like that they get too much sugar or something and it just sends them off into some crazy binge. So, <laughs> uh, but let's get into the truth. And, and I, I read something and, and I've probably discussed this before because Every time I get to this, I, I just wonder, and, and there's no answer to this, I don't believe, but, um, you know, God has called Moses. I'm into Exodus now, in Exodus chapter four, and God has called Moses, said, Moses, I want you to lead my children out of, his, out of Egypt. And, and um, so, first of all, 
Moses continues to make excuses. And it says in chapter four, verse 14, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. I mean, there did come a point where God was very patient with Moses and he made all kinds of excuses why he shouldn't do this. But, uh, and God just answered his questions and then continued to tell him what he needed to do. And, 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 uh, and he just continues to make excuses. And it finally came to a point where God said, you know, hey, this is enough, all right? And he, so he gives him Aaron to, to help him. And that, that wasn't God's divine will, and not his perfect will, I should say. He knew what was going to come, but that isn't exactly what God wanted for him. But he, he allowed him to have Aaron to, to be the spokesman. And, and we know Aaron was a headache in several times along the way. But anyway, we have that. But then we get down to verse 24, and this is what it says about God and Moses. And it came to pass, by the way, in the end, that the Lord met him, met Moses, and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah, that, that's Moses' wife, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he, from what I can understand, God, let him go, let Moses go. Then she said, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. So apparently had something to do with his obedience to uh, the the sign of the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, was uh, the circumcision, and Moses needed to do that. And I don't know, it's just interesting that there was a point in time where Moses just about bit the dust, and somebody else was going to be put in that position. And I don't know why, I just find that interesting, and, and I guess we'll find out someday if it's important, right, when we get to heaven. But then something else that jumped out at me was in chapter five and verse four, Moses comes into Egypt and now they've been there 400 years. So, I mean, the Jews now have been there a long time. And uh, so Moses comes along and afterward Moses and, and Aaron went in and, and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? You know, the, the thing that um, I find interesting here is, uh, first of all, I said 400 years. I, I guess that, that comes to my mind, 400 years, but I better back that up at some point in time. But um, the thing that comes to my mind on this is, if they've been there for all these years and these generations, how is it that Pharaoh hasn't even heard of God? I mean, what, what have the Jews been doing? It, it just seems like, you know what it seems like? It just seems like they've been busy working and they've been busy living and they've been busy taking care of their homes and taking care of their families and just staying under the radar and, and just doing the things that they were doing. And they were servants. I mean, they, they had to do hard work making bricks and uh, terribly hard work to do that. And and here they are, and Israel makes the statement that who is the Lord? I, I just, uh, and, and maybe that was just an arrogant statement. Maybe you had heard of him, but it just reminds me that, you know, we just can't get so caught up in, in just everyday living and and doing our own thing and, and quietly just going about and taking care of our family and doing good things. I'm, I'm not saying that those are bad things that we're doing, but uh, not including God in that, well, then then it does become bad. And how, how careful we need to be of not allowing that to happen in our lives. And so um, I, I don't know, we just need to be a little more outspoken about our faith. We need to uh, be willing to tell other people about about Christ and, and that Jesus is the answer. We need to, to be willing to share that with others. Uh, otherwise, if, if we just be quiet, look at the loons that have taken over and, and they're going to lead this country down a, a, a path of hell. And we need to stand up and we need to be loud about our faith and about Jesus and, 
and turn the boat around. And God's the only one that can do that. And we need to be telling people about that and not just be so quiet that nobody ever hears, you know, about God. So, and I think it would be a shame for Morgan County to at some point in time run into somebody in at Platte Valley Baptist Church that has told them about Jesus, given them a track or invited them to church or, you know, some, some recognition of God, you know, being in control. I mean, we need to be busy and we need to get out there and we need to, to, to tell people around us and, and your circle of people is different than my circle and, and together we can, and, and we need to, and we need to get out there and reach them. And, but, so that was some of the thoughts. And then I read in Proverbs 5, Proverbs 5 has been dealing with, with purity, really. It's been talking about the strange woman. It's been talking about men that follow these strange women. And, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, men and women are, are the same a lot of times when it comes to wanting attention. And, you, you know, I, I see, I see preachers that make themselves into rock stars and they want to be popular with, with those around them. And, and give, give me a break. It is, it has nothing to do with popularity. It has everything to do with being a servant of Christ. And, but then women want to be popular. And one of the ways that they try to be popular is they, you know, they, they, uh, dress scantily. They, put out videos and, you know, the TikToks and Instagram and I mean, what, wherever, uh, anywhere on the phone, you can go on the phone and find them wherever and, and dress with nothing on hardly to just gain attention. And, and all it, it's doing is, is causing all kinds of serious problems in marriages and homes and in kids and in their minds and guys and, and gals both, right? And, this is what this is what he reminded me of in Proverbs 5:19. Let her, let your wife. That's what he's talking about. Uh, it, it, he says, uh, uh, "Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a stranger?" For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. I mean, I, I, wrote, I wrote this down. I need to love Teresa with all my being, and I do. And, and I need to do better. I need to treat her better. I, I need to uh, uh, love her better, and, and I need to work on that every day. Guys, you need to do that with your wife. God, God instituted marriage. I mean, it's God who thought of this. Um, no one else thought of marriage. God did. And, 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 and it's a beautiful thing. And it, and it represents truly the, the relationship of Christ and the church. And, and we ought to guard our marriage. And so many don't. And so many just trash their wives. And, and I, I don't know, they have scorn towards their wives. And they I don't know. They they insult their wives. They tell jokes about their wives. They 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 demean them by the things that they call them. And and I, you know it just sickens me when somebody calls me calls their wife the old lady. Come on, give me a break. That that is just trash. And and don't do that. And treat your wife like you ought to. And and ladies, treat your husband like you ought to. And guard your marriage all the time. I mean there there are these women and men out there just seeking attention and want nothing but attention. And they could care less about you. And in marriages are just collapsing all over the place and we need to guard it. And it just was a reminder to me, I need to, to guard against those things. And so the, you know, devotion was all over today, but, and then I was reading Matthew 18 and this goes right along with this. All right. It says, woe unto the world because of offenses and offenses causing someone to stumble in their walk. All right. So these very characters that I'm talking about causing others to stumble for it must needs be that offenses come. It's going to happen. We're in a sinful, uh, uh, cursed world, right? But woe to that man 
by whom the offense cometh. There's coming a day when all of that nonsense is going to be judged. And let's just make sure that, that we're not the one causing someone to stumble, but rather we're the one that's lifting someone up and helping someone in their walk. And and if that means you make some sacrifices in in where you go, what you do, what you wear, how you act, well, so what? You you do it for God and 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 you you do it to help someone rather than hurt someone. Because when we hurt someone, yeah, there's a day coming when yes, as a as a believer, your your sins have been dealt with at the cross, but I'm telling you, your works are gonna be judged and God's not happy with that and not happy with me either. And so I just, I need to love my wife. I need to avoid these characters that are trying to cause me to stumble. I need to avoid the things that that would cause me to jeopardize my marriage and walk perfectly with God. And I only do that through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. So anyway, that's a, those are good ones. And then It just reminds me all through Matthew 18, you know, verse 11, for the son of man has come to save that which was lost. I mean, we we need to have a powerful testimony of, you know, telling people about Jesus and that that he seeks them out. And I mean, he talks about uh, the the brethren that that, uh, is sinning and you confront them. And if they don't uh, get things right, what we as a church need to do in, in dealing with the one that, that um, is living in sin. You know, we need to be accountable. We need to let the, the church hold us accountable. And and when somebody comes to you and, and they're concerned about what you're doing in your life and some of the decisions you're making and, and they call you on it, yet you shouldn't be mad at them. And, and that's what happens so often. We want to justify what we're doing. And so then we just take it as a personal attack and go after that one that's attacking us. And instead, all they're doing is trying to help you with your testimony. And we need to just get things right. We all stumble and we need to help each other, right? I stumble, you stumble. We all need to, we just need to do better. And and we need to to stand and, and do the right things in our lives. So I don't know. Somebody need to hear this today because my phone has been blowing up ever since we we started this one today. I, I don't I don't know what it was. The devil didn't want you to hear today, but somebody's going to hear this today, and I think it's going to be a help to them because um, text after text, emails, uh, phone calls, you know, dogs barking and carrying on. I mean, just a lot of craziness going on this morning. So um, that's all right. We got through it and. Uh, just we just need to walk. We need to walk with the Lord and and guard that and uh, make sure that we uh, stay after God's will in our lives. So, anyways, Thursday is snowing here. I have told my wife that I'm here today. We are going to do a deep clean of the house and shampoo some carpets and yeah. So if you need me, I'm doing Mary Martha stuff here at the house today. So. But God bless you guys and have a great day.